Hey everybody, it's Anthony Meisner at Land Title. Wanted to bring you your first to know update for Denver Metro in the month of February. And here we are beginning in March and I've got some exciting news. We released showing traffic data that is gonna couple what we've been putting out. So some new information for you. What I like about this is this really gives us an idea of what's to come, right? I mean, this is preliminary data. So average showings depending is 17. That's pretty cool. We're down about 9% from this time last year. Showings per listing is 8.4. So you should be able to use this information with some of your buyers and sellers. But I think most importantly, I wanted to get into what our buyers and sellers are actually experiencing out there in the marketplace. So very similar inventory levels to this time last year, right? Only 3% down. It's going to feel very similar in the market. New listings, the appetite's up quite a bit. So almost 15% increase in new listings in the month of February. So that's a really good sign that we're off to a good start because it was such a slow year last year, right? So when we look at 23 as kind of that new baseline, that gives us a measure of really, you know, what's going to be up or down from there and really how's that affected by interest rates and all these things. So that's what's going on on the listing side. Now the buy side, because if we're going to have an increase in new listings like that, and we're not going to have this huge surge in inventory, under contracts are actually looking really good, right? They're very similar to where they were last year, up from January to February, right in line with where we were a year ago, you know, 2% drop, but expect that to continue to carry on. Month supply of listings is just very low. 1.4 months of inventory is just not enough inventory, right? It's, we've been in this inventory shortage for a long time, even though we have a, a lot more inventory than we have had, maybe in the pandemic years, it's still a really tight market. And that's going to keep those um, you know, those appreciation rates and everything kind of in check when maybe some of the rest of the country is going to struggle a little bit because we just don't have enough housing in Colorado for the people here. Now, you can really see what's happening in the market. We went from 49 days to 46 days in the last month. So things are speeding up as they tend to. You're going to see that accelerate all the way through that May, June timeframe, and then it'll slow back down. It should look like a horseshoe, just like that dark blue line like last year should. Expect this to kind of follow suit. Assuming we don't have some drop off or increase in interest rates, we'll probably have a slow change, right? But if we have anything extreme happen, that would disrupt the market a little bit. But your buyers and sellers are experiencing a lot of the same behavior as last year. Same with the close to list price, right? Barely above where we were a year ago. We're going to see that kind of increase continue just like we saw last year because things are consistent. When things don't change in the marketplace, we're going to see a lot of the same consumer behavior. People might get frustrated sitting on the sidelines, but until things change enough for them to either be able to afford to buy or feel like they're going to get the traction when they sell a home that they want, a lot of people are kind of stuck in place right now, which eventually will break free as interest rates start to change. Now, the average sales price and the median sales price are both up 4.6 and 5%. They look pretty healthy, right? This is a good sign for the market that they're better than they were a year ago. I mean, those year over year change numbers are great. We'd love to see those positive numbers. And like I said, that low inventory level is going to keep that resiliency in the market. <clears throat> if you look at the condo townhouse market, much more flat, right? Closer to that zero mark, but 466, still a fairly expensive place to live in the metro area. One of those second guesses, if you got to look back and say, you know, I don't know if my sales price is right, is looking back at that price per square foot. So the last slide I have for you is price per square foot in the Denver metro area. Detached single family homes were at 288 last month, very similar to this time last year, but up 5%. Just like I said, up 5% on the average sales price. So it feels like the market's appreciated 5% in the last year, right? We should, we should feel that. Now the condo townhouse market up 2.7%, slightly better than those average or median numbers, but still in a very good spot. 338 is still fairly affordable in that, but it's definitely more expensive to build in that confined of a space. Either way, Denver Metro is still looking relatively affordable to some of the other surrounding areas. So you're still going to see people moving here, even if those average and median sales prices are pretty high. And we just have the jobs to support that. So if you have any other questions or you want to get into any other markets with me, I'm Anthony Meisner at Land Title. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the videos, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.